Uh, I was talking to a friend of mine who's a member of a uh, fishing organization called the Rhode Island Saltwater Anglers Association. And he was saying so many of our members just lost a good portion of their season because of engine failure. Could you make some videos of how to easily prevent some failures? Some of them you can't prevent. Uh, a lot of them you can. Um, this is number one. We're going to start at the bottom of the motor, make a series of uh, videos on how to prevent engine failures by basically inspecting your motor um, and some warning signs knowing it's going to fail and how to remedy it yourself rather than getting the long line uh, of service that is in the middle of season here in the Northeast that you bring your boat in to be fixed by a professional like us. We might tell you four weeks, five weeks, whatever. Um, so it's best if you can prevent it yourself. In some cases, you can fix it yourself. So uh, we're going to talk about uh, propeller uh, maintenance and lower unit maintenance basically during the season, not unlike winterization, how to check it. And the big en enemy, one of the biggest enemies of a lower unit is the stuff you guys like, fish line. Fish line gets inside the seal. Um, of the lower unit and ruins the prop shaft seal. I'll show you how that happens and how to prevent it and how to check it to make sure it, it doesn't damage your lower unit and ruin your season and possibly cost you as much as five to six thousand dollars to replace the lower unit. So first we're going to remove the lower unit and we'll walk through your procedure. This is a Yamaha V6. This is a lower unit we have remanufactured for one of our customers. It's going on a complete 1999 200 horsepower Yamaha um, going on a Grady weight. So first of all, you take the powder pin out and the best thing to use is a pair of wire cutters like that. You push it out and you actually grab as close as you can with the cutters not cutting through. We're not using it as wire cutters and you use it as a lever like that and that'll come right out. This one is not a stubborn one, but even a stubborn one would come out like that. Then you find that correct size socket. You pull it out like this. A lot of cases, it's a good idea to use a two by four. This is in a stand, so it'll come right out like that. You can put a two by four in there like this. This keeps it from turning very well like that. Take this all off. And you always have a nice landing spot for all your uh, components. Don't set them on the ground up here. You might be working over gravel, grass. Easily to lose these parts. They're very expensive, sometimes hard to find. Pull your propeller off. Set that aside too. And this is very important. This is one of the most critical parts that people leave out. That's called a thrust washer. And what happens during the season, somebody will need to replace their prop because they uh, hit something. What happens is this uh, thrust washer will fit really well in the lower unit. So what will happen is this propeller will be damaged. You'll go buy a new one. You'll set this down and boom, this falls out. Or it stays with the old propeller. So what will happen is you'll go, well, I need another propeller. You don't know the difference. You put this lower unit on and without the thrust washer, there's nothing keeping this lower, the stainless steel propeller, it's worse on stainless, from driving itself inside this lower unit and destroying it. And again, this lower unit can cost you as much as $5,000. Not this particular one, but uh, that's a lot of money. So, which, what I want you to do is every time you put a propeller on, we'll cover it later, you push down and if it starts to bind, you know you don't have your thrust washer in. You can also use the wrong thrust washer. Sometimes the thrust washers are re supplied with the replacement propeller. It may not be the right one, maybe they didn't pack it right. So you always check for thrust. And the reason it's called a thrust washer is it's got a taper right there. 
that goes on your prop shaft and I, this is one that's apart. It fits on the taper. Therefore, the force of the propeller, all of it, is on that prop shaft, not on your aluminum here, which is called a bearing carrier. And that's your seal. That's the part that gets destroyed with fish line. What happens is, you're out there, you lose a piece of fish line, or if you see it get caught uh, behind the propeller, it's like, oh, big deal, I just put a new lure on it, whatever. Well, the fish line is going to keep wrapping itself on that prop shaft and getting into this seal, which is just rubber. I'll show you an example of it. And it'll keep wrapping it up and it'll eat it inside there. And you're not going to know that that lower unit is filling with water all the time. So it takes out this prop shaft seal. Which is just rubber right there. It destroys it. You know, of course it's marine, so that's a $20 seal, but if it went in a car, it'd be $5. But anyways, it destroys itself, and you don't know it for, could be months later. This is full of water. It takes a while to destroy itself. And your season is over, and you lose. A good part of your fishing season. It, I find this interesting. I don't know if anybody else will, but this is a Yamaha thrust washer. And I didn't know this for a while, but it's got a little groove here. That groove is designed to catch the fish line and keep it from getting into the seal. And we took this one off earlier this month. That's a bunch of fish line and it just wrapped itself around the thrust washer. And it didn't get into the seal, so it did its job. Uh, very, very simple design. The only I know about it is mainly Yamaha uses. I don't see it in many other motors. Maybe they even hold a patent. But it saves the lower unit. And probably saves them money because during warranty periods, they probably have to cover that lower unit because somebody just dropped $25,000 on a new motor and they're not going to take the blame even if they got fish line in there so this is a traditional thrust washer that goes on most other motors no little ridge there so the line will get between here and the seal this is a seal they also encapsulated it with stainless that mercury did that not a bad idea it works pretty good so the shaft uh, the, the line can't get in there and sometimes the line does get between the stainless and the seal you can see the seals in there so you can see that's where the line gets on the shaft keeps wrapping around so in addition when you do have to repair this this is an aluminum bearing carrier that goes in here like this this part is exhaust this part's aluminum, of course. Lower unit's aluminum. And it's soaked in salt water with hot exhaust gases going through it. Well, unless you're using it in fresh water. This doesn't like to come out. So we usually have to heat them. Sometimes they come right out. Most of the time they don't. And that can be a great expense. We just had to have, we just, because of fish line, we just did three lower units in this off season. Customers had no idea that they had fish line on their Prop shaft, lower unit is full of water. We resealed the lower unit. It costs between probably five hundred and a thousand dollars to do that job. So uh, they could have prevented it. It's like, and one one of our customers says, oh, "I knew fish line got on there." I said, "Well, that, that would be the time to take the propeller off, even if it's in the water and it's expensive to haul. You don't have a trailer. It's possible to do in the water." So, main recommendation is, if you think you've got any chance, say a 2%, a 5% chance is fish line in there, and you can go through somebody else's fish line and pull it up, take the propeller off and inspect it. Another thing you can inspect if you have hit something or there's a vibration, you can actually take a screwdriver like this, put it on the end of the shaft, 
find a flat spot like this, turn it. This shaft is bent. Let's hold it on there. Something like that. You're gonna feel a little wobble. Prop shafts get bent because somebody hit something. It might have not been you, it might have been a previous owner, or you could have hit something going out for your fishing spot. And it was a floating object, you didn't even know you hit it. And that bent, what happens when it's bent, it doesn't bend here or here. A lot of times it bends inside there. And then this shaft is working that seal, not even. It's spinning, and as it's spinning, it's, it's actually working that seal and possibly destroying the seal or, or destroying some parts inside here. So when, in that case, we can take them out, and we actually, instead of buying a prop shaft that can cost up as much as 600 bucks, we can bring it to a machine shop. They actually straighten them out. You're fine. Unless it's bent really bad, and they can't straighten it. So once you have your lower, your propeller off, perhaps you took it off because you um, damaged your propeller or it was time to put a new one on or you want to do this inspection. You want to put your propeller back on. This is the procedure you should do. You always grease your slides. Pretty much any marine grease will do. And you put your thrust washer on first. Always put a thrust washer on. If you didn't find it, it's probably stuck to the lower unit. So you have to pry it out of there. Or sometimes you can just drive the propeller down on the ground, it comes off. Put the thrust washer on first. Put the propeller on. And they always have a spacer. This is also something that can fall off if it goes recesses inside this propeller like this. That's what we I like to call fall off. You set the propeller down, it falls off, you don't notice. You put it on without it. And if you don't really have a lot of attention to detail, of course, that prop won't be tight and it'll be banging back and forth. The motor will actually shake at low RPM. This is actually spline, so you got to fit that in there. Yamaha is another spacer washer that goes on there. Then you have your propeller, your prop nut, very important. And this one is torqued to 38 pounds. So we'll just use our torque wrench and set it to 30 pounds. You have to line up your hole. This one is going to go a little further to line up the hole for the cutter pin, obviously. Again, you can use your 2x4. Probably shouldn't have been holding that by hand. And you can reuse the cotter pin if it's in good shape like this one. Straighten it out. Bend it over. Color without the cotter pin will fall off. No doubt. Um, I learned the hard way. So, 
is a busy place during the summer, especially. Go to put a propeller on. I'm out in the yard. I put it on. Oh, I'm gonna get a new cotter pin for this propeller. I walk inside to get a cotter pin. I get a question. There's a phone call. I answer it. I get a question bring me from a tech. Uh, I go back outside. What was I doing? I don't know. Well, this boat's ready for a sea trial. Let's go out. And I brought my late father with me because he used to like to help out at the shop. And sure enough, we're, the, we have a river, we're on the Niantic River. We're in the middle of the river. I go, oh, I forgot the cotter pin. Well, since I know that, I'm thinking this through. And as I'm driving the boat, I'm going to slow down. As I'm slowing down, I'm going to trim it up. I'm going to leave it in here. I'm not going to take it out of here because I know the propeller, the water is going to be whooshing by this as the boat slows down. The boat's going to slow down faster than the propeller. That'll push it off. So in theory, if I slow down, I, I thought, and I trim up, that propeller will stay on there. I'll find something, a nail, anyways, anything to put on that. I'll get back, get the cotter pen. Well, slowed down, kind of trimmed almost out of the water. It's almost not moving, shut the key off. Watch the propeller go down. And, and of course I had to do it when I was in the middle of the river. And I almost dove in after I mean, it was amazing, it just went down. So fortunately I drifted into a dock, it was a friend's dock. I called one of my guys and he brought me another propeller. So what I do now, if I'm putting a floor unit on, I forgot the cotter pin, I can't reuse the auto cotter pin. You know, procedurally, I'll take that floor unit all the way off. Set it on the ground. And then I go, okay, I forgot the cotter pin. I'm going to get the cotter pin, and then I put everything back together. Has it happened in the last 20 years? So I think I learned my lesson. It was a tough one. So um, that's pretty much it. So... I, you know, if I were, if you were fishing really hard, I would probably take these props off, even in the middle of the season, just to check it out. If you got fish line in there, then at that point, haul the boat, check your gear lube. You might be able to save it. And whatever you do, don't do the hack move. And there's there's videos on the internet. So a lot of people will try to put like wood screws in here. They try to dig out this this seal. Whatever kind of hook and everything else. One guy even labels his wet website the hack way. Well, if you don't care about your stuff, that's fine. But you can damage this housing. This is expensive. We've already went through how expensive it is to change. Um, it, it won't be right. And when we do have these seals off, we thoroughly clean it. Sometimes even like hone it out, make it perfectly uh, clean. Put the new seal in. Sometimes we have to bed it and seal it because it likes to come out. And then we pressure test the lower unit with 15 pounds of air and for about 15 minutes. Yamaha sometimes you have to do 10. And then we're insured it's not going to leak. We have to do that job. It might work, but it's a hack move. Um, it's your boat, so you can try it. But as a professional, I'd never do it. I would never put my name on that kind of job. That's pretty much it. Uh, that's one way to keep your boat going so you get a full season of fishing. Um, it's a real bummer when the fish are biting and your boat's not running. So.